All right, everybody, we're taking a bit of a break from our wall-to-wall -wall RTX 3080 content to bring you something a little bit different. You see, a few weeks ago, Intel announced their upcoming Tiger Lake processor designs that will be rolled into Thin and Light notebooks a bit later this year. Uh, so many things that will be used in Tiger Lake will eventually make their way into desktops too. For example, uh, Willow Cove Core so will provide a foundation for future desktop CPU designs, and the XE graphics engine will be expanded into a discrete graphics card. We've actually done an explain video, so if you're interested in checking that out, link will be right over here. Anyways, when Intel announced Tiger Lake to the world, they ended up making a whole lot of big claims about how it lined up with AMD's Ryzen 4000 series. Considering how far behind Ice Lake was, it meant Intel might have fixed a lot of its performance issues in a single generation. The only thing left was to prove it. After seeing what they said during the live stream, we had a lot of questions, concerns, a lot of skepticism. Basically, we wanted them to back up those claims with hard numbers that uh, we could validate firsthand. And guess what, guys? They responded with this. It's an early pre-production system from one of Intel's partners that has a Tiger Lake CPU installed. And if you look close enough, I'm pretty sure you can tell which one. The only big change is some Intel branding on the lid, so the actual manufacturer isn't so obvious. To be honest with you guys, when this thing showed up, uh, I was almost tempted to send it back because usually with this sort of stuff, it comes with a bunch of restrictions that you're not allowed to show or share with your audience. And the last thing that anybody wants around here is to come up with a content piece that's just an Intel fluff material with limited tests run on it. But that didn't happen because Intel told us to run any benchmark, any game, any application. Basically, the sky is the limit, uh, which is awesome. But there are a couple of restrictions. The first thing is that I can't show you what's inside uh, this notebook because it's a partner pre-production sample and they just don't want to get away or give away any engineering secrets. Uh, the second thing is that battery life can't be tested because as I mentioned earlier, this is a pre-production unit and the battery capacity is smaller than your usual size that you get with other than light notebooks. But other than that, no strings attached. And I think uh, I'm pretty cool with that. Another thing I need to mention is the drivers for the platform and GPU are still in beta phase. And so are the BIOS optimizations as well. A lot of companies try to avoid setting poor expectations early on. So they tend to keep their early samples under wraps till final devices roll out. But this time Intel and their partner had the courage and the confidence to send this out now a few weeks before it even hits the market. Now for complete transparency, this machine was preloaded with a bunch of handy scripts that run real world workloads in applications like uh, Premiere, Photoshop, Gigapixel, and a few others. Unfortunately, we didn't have the time to validate uh, their accuracy, so we just ended up using our usual benchmark suite and a few others that we're currently working on as well. So I guess that brings us to specs. But first, a quick refresh on the Tiger Lake lineup. Basically, it looks a lot like Ice Lake did with CPU starting at two cores and four threads all the way up to the i7 1185G7, which has four cores and eight threads. That means AMD will still have the edge in raw core counts with the 4800U. Meanwhile, the 4700U will probably have a slight performance edge when operating in a similar power envelope since its eight physical cores will scale better than Intel's hyper-threaded ones. Three things that have improved on the processor side are frequency ranges and supported memory, which is now up to 4266 megahertz if a notebook uses LPDDR4X. The last thing is the XE graphics engine, which is completely new from the previous generation, and it now features up to 50% more execution units. Those clock speeds are exactly what last-gen processors needed, since in most situations, they just couldn't compete all that well. But now, there's a leap forward that should take performance to another level versus Ice Lake, but given how poorly those CPUs performed, that isn't much of a compliment. One thing I wanted to focus a bit more is on the power range. One of the main challenges with benchmarking notebook processors is the way they're implemented in devices. Unlike desktop parts where you could have it installed in any system and expect pretty similar performance. In the mobile market, companies actually choose a CPU and then determine its power limit based on a bunch of different design factors like cooling, surface temperatures, and even the notebook size. So while a CPU has access to less current, it performs or would perform slower, while more means higher sustained clock speeds. So what that means, is that if you have an identical processor installed on two different notebooks, they're gonna perform very differently from one another. In Tiger Lake's case, there are two ranges depending on the processor, uh, either 15 to 28 watts or seven to 15. So the notebook that we have comes with an i7-1185G7, 
16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X memory operating at 4266 MHz, and a one terabyte Samsung PM981A NVMe SSD. So it's basically what you'd expect to find in a high-end Ultrabook. We're also able to test different wattages since the power plans on this notebook have been set to run at about 28 watts when in balance mode, while battery safer limits the CPU to just 15 watts. This should give you an idea of how the i7 1185G7 performs in a lot of different designs. There's another mode called high performance that enables Intel's dynamic tuning algorithm. And what this does is it pushes the power to 35 watts in certain usage scenarios, provided the CPU has enough temperature headroom. But before I get into the benchmarks, I do wanna emphasize one more time that you need to take all these numbers with a grain of salt because they'll be accurate for this very early pre-production sample. Uh, and just like the production units, performance will be different from one design to another. So take this as more of a rough guidance of where the i7 1185G7 at 28 watts and 15 watts will probably stand once production notebooks are launched with the final drivers and BIOSes. We're also comparing it to a few other notebooks. There's the XPS 13 from 2020 that has a previous gen Ice Lake Core i7 1065G7 operating at 25 watts. The Asus ZenBook 14 we reviewed a few weeks ago with a 4700U. Finally, there's the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 with a 4800U that operates at 35 watts in extreme performance mode, and it just arrived a few days ago. So that should be an interesting comparison to the 35 watt mode. Starting off with Cinebench, and right away, it's evident that Tiger Lake is a huge generational push ahead from Ice Lake. Also, there's just no way Tiger Lake would have beat AMD in a purely multi-threaded workload. So that was a foregone conclusion. But then again, the 35 watt setting does give it an extra boost. Single core and lightly threaded benchmarks is where the i7 1185G7 likes to play. Considering Ice Lake was a step back in this regard, Intel needed to nail this metric and that's what they did. All right, so that's our last set of synthetic results because the real focus of our notebook reviews lately has become real world testing. Starting with Blender, and again, the performance improvements versus Ice Lake are really evident here. We're talking about a good 30% improvement, and even the 15 watt setting nets results are equal to a 25 watt Ice Lake CPU. Photo editing is pretty equal across the board, but the 15 watt setting does cause the i7 1185G7 to fall behind, while the 28 watt and 35 watt specs are the fastest ULB processors we've seen in this program so far. Meanwhile, WinRAR sees the new Tiger Lake CPU beating the 16 threaded Ryzen 7 4800U by a really slim margin. And that 15 watt spec, well, that shows just how far behind Ice Lake really was. In more general usage cases, the i7 1185G7 really starts to shine since it can take advantage of high clock speeds in lightly threaded scenarios. Excel is a great example of that, and at both wattage settings, it really puts the screws to everything else in this test. The same thing goes for Microsoft Word, where our chart pasting test of a large Excel chart represents a real world scenario that a lot of you could probably relate to. Tiger Lake's dominance is pretty clear in this situation, though all of Intel CPUs tend to do well here. Now in this test, we take a document with 20 Hardware Connect sales kits, which are loaded with images and then export them from PowerPoint to a PDF document at a compressed resolution. And yes, you probably guessed the results before seeing them. One thing that was really surprising was how poorly Ice Lake did here, but that's likely due to its really low clock speeds. MATLAB's a program that's widely used in science and engineering fields, along with classrooms all over the world. That means ultra portable notebooks need to deliver a good performance in that application. And well, the i7 1185G7 does really, really well here, which is likely due to a combination of clock speeds and optimizations built into this app. Transcoding is another multi-core test and Tiger Lake actually falls really far behind, even with the 4700U. We're not sure what's going on here, but AMD is pretty dominant. On the other hand, this doesn't take into account the hardware acceleration AMD has through VCE or Intel does through QuickSync or Handbrake. We're gonna add that in upcoming reviews, but the test wasn't ready in time for this one. Now, the chances of someone using Premiere on an Ultrabook notebook is pretty slim, but it's still nice to have the option if you need to do some quick video editing on the fly. And here, Intel's QuickSync is able to step in and really accelerate render times. AMD, on the other hand, has shockingly bad results, since even with the new Premiere 14.2 and later updates, the integrated graphics never really kicks in on the U-series chips during any of the H.264 or H.265 renders we test. Luckily, AMD is aware of the issue and they're supposedly looking into it. All right, so now onto gaming performance. 
And this is a bit of a controversial thing because a lot of you might be thinking, you know, who games on a thin line notebook? I guess a better question that I have for you is why not? Because if a super portable notebook can provide decent frame rates in some basic games, that's great. And we should be celebrating that. Remember that Intel has been moving towards the brand new XC GPU architecture and the performance it gives even with super early drivers is pretty mind blowing for an ultrabook. The Iris XC with 96 execution units actually manages to either beat or match the AMD 4000 U series, even though its 1% lows are a bit all over the place right now. Not only that, but it blows Ice Lake out of the water. The only real hiccup came in with Rainbow Six Siege where it used to run pretty well, but something in the latest game update caused crashing. Intel says that they know what the problem is and they expect to fix it before the systems launch. Well, it looks like Tiger Lake feels like two steps forward for Intel because Ice Lake caused them to take a step back. Because when you look at these early results, it actually puts them in a much more competitive position in the Thinalite market. Now, of course, there are tons of questions swirling around how final devices will perform and most importantly, battery life. But it looks like Tiger Lake can spank Ice Lake pretty good and it performs way better compared to the Ryzen U series, especially when it comes to lightly threaded applications. And considering those apps are the ones that are being used by the majority of users, it's an important win. Now on the professional side, it's a bit of a mixed bag, but there's lots of progress too. A 35 watt Tiger Lake still has trouble matching a 4700U set to 25 watts in heavy multi-thread applications. That shows how well AMD has done with their seven nanometer architecture. And if they ever get around to fixing their drivers for Premier Acceleration, Intel will have a battle on their hands there as well. There are some warnings for AMD though, specifically on the GPU side, since they're now getting beat in an area where they dominated. Intel sunk a ton of money into their graphics architecture and it's starting to show even with very early drivers. While Zen 3 may have Navi graphics, their slow rollout of new GPU architectures has allowed Intel to catch up. So I guess I'll be waiting for the final notebooks to start showing up, but until that point, I'm pretty excited about what Intel has showed uh, with Tiger Lake and just sort of a performance preview. Uh, honestly, it's gonna be an interesting rest of the year, especially in the notebook side. And let me know what you guys think about Tiger Lake and are you impressed with its performance? I'm really curious to know. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.